Hey friends, I have a video I want to share with you, something that happened way back at the beginning of 2014. And I want to give you a backstory about this video because in this backstory, even at that time, I was experiencing Christian persecution on this job. So let me explain briefly what happened. An incredible miracle of God took place at my old place of employment many years ago. Me and a brother in the Lord, his name is Larry Shelby, you have seen him here on my channel. We were both together and we were alone in the plant. Basically, we declared together an agreement that the glory of the Lord will fill this entire plant. And that is exactly what happened. A physical manifestation of God took place just as we both prophesied together and practically almost burned down the entire steel mill. And this is a short documentary of what happened that I made right on the spot and I posted it immediately to my channel. And there are a bunch of scoffers and mockers and non-believers that I worked with at this place. I hated the work that I did on YouTube and they always made fun of me, called me on the radio and made fun of my Christianity and my love for Jesus. So eventually one of them found out that I posted this on my channel and they ran to the mill foreman, showed it to him, and the mill foreman came to me. His name was Chad, and he said, hey, unless you take this down, I will fire you from this job. And I was like, I don't care, I'll take it down. Nobody watches that video anymore. It pretty much tapped down on views. And at this point, this video was over a year since I posted it. Nobody's watching it anymore. And because of that reason, it didn't bother me. So I was like, sure, I'll take it down. It's no big deal to me. And then I watched his reaction, and this is where the persecution comes in. He seemed so disappointed that I wasn't heartbroken about it. So he sat there for a few seconds, gathered his thoughts, and then he continued to threaten me further. Because it turns out, when they showed him the video I made, the one you're going to watch right here, they also told him that I was also using company time to edit my material while I was at work. Of course, what they failed to tell them was I was doing this during my break time. People read newspapers, me, I edited my material for my channel. So I don't see what the big deal was. So anyhow, this is what he said to me. If you do any more filming on this location or work on editing your material here at work, the next time I see you, you're going to need a union rep. And I just looked at him and laughed to myself. First, I was like, yeah, that's an empty threat. You can't touch me. I've seen people there get busted using drugs and getting into fights and not lose their job. So I'm not going to lose my job over making videos about Jesus. But at this point, I didn't care because I wasn't doing any filming or editing of my videos at work. Anyways, I had everything I needed and all the time I needed at home. So my foreman's name was Chad. If you've ever watched this video, all I got to say to you, too bad, Chad. You were a little late to the party. And later on, I found out this same foreman was walking around and mocking me and stuff like that. Referring back to this miracle that God did that I'm about to show you in this video right here. Anytime something weird happened in the mill, something unexplainable, he would say, oh, it must have been a bunch of white smoke. Referring back to what I'm about to show you right here. Everybody laughed and giggled at me. And what's interesting is... God took care of him because what God did after this is God promoted him to plant manager of the whole plant. And then very shortly after that, God pulled the rug out from underneath the plant and the whole plant went out of business. So in the end, all the fingers were basically pointing back at him. So I don't know where this dude is at today, but I'm sure that did not look good on his resume. But everything worked out good for me because I was in a union and I just got transferred to a different plant. So, good example why you don't mess with God's children. That's why God says, vengeance is mine. Amen. So, that's my backstory about this video. I hope you enjoyed it. So, now let's get into the video itself. I want to share with you an amazing thing that just happened today. I'm here at work right now. And, uh, just here at the pile of burnt wood bricks. Now, you're wondering, how the heck did these wood bricks get burned up? Well, I got a little story for you, okay? My, uh, my brother, friend, Mr. Larry Shelby, great man of God, 
He's a pastor at his church, great and holy man of God. Last Friday, him and I were the only ones in this entire shop by ourselves. Nobody. The plant was shut down. And when I say the entire plant here, I mean the entire plant. We're the only two people in the entire plant. This plant is about the size of 200 football fields. Well, we decided to crank our radio up, playing all kinds of great Christian praise and worship music. We started dancing. We started praising the Lord and singing at the top of our lungs. And we started saying, so we are going to fill this place with the Holy Ghost, the fire of the Holy Ghost. We're going to fill this place. Let me show you now exactly what happened. Follow me. Right over here, we had a heater that actually broke down. It was seven days later. It was seven days later. Now, what I didn't mention here is the fact that the whole plant was shut down with nobody inside it for a whole seven days. This happened over the Christmas holiday. And the smoke from this little event that took place in our shop filled this entire plant, like I said, was the size of 200 football fields. I remember walking in the front entrance way on the other side of this huge plant and I was greeted by white smoke in that area. And as I walked through the plant to reach the locker room, I noticed that this white smoke was everywhere. And I was saying to myself, where is all this smoke coming from? Well, it turns out when we made it to our shop, this is what we found. Now we all know that seven means perfection. It means completion. It means finished in the Bible. The fire broke out over here. As you can see, we had a heater that broke down. This thing short, short circuited and it started a very smoldering fire. You can see it right here. Okay, the wire right here. It has started a fire. And right over here, we have all the bricks that started on fire. It actually started a smoldering fire. And I forgot to mention too that these bricks here, these wooden bricks, were also saturated in oil because it was a very oily, greasy shop. So you have a small little fire, the tongue, the fire of the Holy Spirit, okay, that showed up over the heads of the 120 in the upper room and the oil of anointing with the Holy Spirit as well, fire and oil. And when those two came together here, it created enough smoke to fill an entire steel mill the size of 200 football fields. So here I'm standing in this thing right now. So what, what happened? Exactly what happened. We said we were going to fill this place with the Holy Ghost and we did it. What happens in the spiritual eventually manifests itself in the natural. And I also want to mention, too, that Larry and I agreed that the glory of the Lord will fill this whole mill. The Holy Ghost will fill this whole mill. We agreed on it. And Matthew 18, 19, Jesus said, Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. What happened here, when I walked in here this morning, this place was filled with smoke. In fact, the whole mill was filled with smoke. It wasn't just black smoke. It was white smoke. And it blanketed this entire mill. And I want to mention this verse right here. We see a picture of this in the Bible. Revelation chapter 15, verse 8. And the temple was filled with with the smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Exodus 40, verses 34 and 35. Then the cloud covered the tent of congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Ezekiel 10, verse 4. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub, and stood over the threshold of the house, and the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. And let me remind you, this smoke that filled this entire 200 football field-sized plant seven 
days after Larry and I declared in agreement that the glory of the Lord will fill this entire plant, let me remind you that this smoke was a bright white smoke that filled this entire plant. Like I said, 200 football field size plant. It covered every inch of it, every crevice, every room, every open space, even the locker room. It covered everywhere. And when the glory of God manifests as a cloud, it's not going to be a dark cloud. It's going to be a bright white cloud. And the smoke that filled this whole mill was a bright white cloud. How amazing is that? A, a move of God over this mill. We've been praying for, we believed it. And all of a sudden, seven days after we're praying, doing praise and worship prayer, by ourselves in our shop, which by the way, we have never done before. Because there's other people in the shop that are not Christians. They don't want to hear our music, whatever. But we are by ourselves. We crank this radio as loud as we can go, and it filled this whole shop. And we filled this place with the Holy Ghost, the fire of God, the fire of the Holy Ghost. And this place got filled. In fact, the remnants of it is still, what color is that? White. So thank you all. Please share this amazing story. This is just another manifestation of what's coming. Jesus is coming. And Larry, what is, Larry, what is that uh, that Bible, that scripture that we were talking about from, uh, from Elijah? That, uh, it's actually a song that uh, God gave me. I was joking around. He said, oh yeah, it's, we're like the days of Elijah, you know, fire coming down from heaven. And I began to sing the song. These are the days of Elijah. And the song says, and, and righteousness being restored. These are the days of the harvest. Amen. The fields are all white in the world, ready for the harvest. The church is becoming aware again of, of her, her mission and her place in the world as being light and salt in the world. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. So please, by all means, <coughs> share this video and let's just get the word out there. Our Lord and Savior is coming back. and He's coming back soon. We're running out of time. Saints, it looks like 2030 may just be the year of Jesus' return to the earth, according to the information, the data that's coming out right now. And if Jesus is returning in 2030, then subtract seven years from the tribulation, that puts us right here at the beginning of a new seven-year Shemitah cycle, by the way, in 2023. And it's no surprise that in 2030, there is going to be the War of Armageddon, because Satan and his armies are getting ready for that time by causing everybody on earth to eventually take the mark of the beast. We are seeing all of our financial systems going in that direction, all of our rights taken away, all this to bring in the mark of the beast so they can change human beings to be more like the fallen angels in the Nephilim. Thus building his army and gathering them all together to fight, Jesus and his armies of heaven coming in the clouds to meet them at the Valley of Jehoshaphat at the Battle of Armageddon. Now, I tell you all this because the seven year tribulation is about to begin. That means the rapture resurrection is about to take place and we will be out here and our work, everything that we have done to build the body of Christ will be complete, pencils down, test is over, and now it's time for you to stand alone before the judgment seat of Christ to see how well you scored. And your score is not based on how much wealth you build on the earth. That will all be deleted and forgotten. But instead, your score is based on how much work is done in God's kingdom to build the body of Christ. And if this concerns you right now, then let me introduce you to Feed My Sheep today. We have been conducting Christian missions globally for over a decade. And we have built a very extensive worldwide network of missionaries, teachers and evangelists, pastors and people assisting them that are moving about all over their countries from one location to the next. They are preaching the gospel of grace and leading new believers into the body of Christ. And they are providing them free Bibles, humanitarian relief aid as they continue to preach this gospel of grace throughout third world countries. As you can tell, everything is in place. You don't have to do a single thing except provide the seed and thanks to your help 
we have been leading 10 to 15,000 people on average every week to the salvation of Jesus Christ for over a decade. That is a lot of gold, silver, and precious stones. And outside of the rewards and everything, we really need your help. You are so greatly needed right now. Your impact is so greatly needed right now. So please, just take a couple minutes right now, pause the video, and go to our website, feedmysheeptoday.org. The link is below. There you can give by PayPal, credit card, bank draft, or just send your gift in the mail. Do you want to make a big impact right now but can't afford to do so? I got a simple answer for you. Just become a monthly sustainer. We greatly need more monthly sustainers. And the great benefit about this position is you can set it and forget it. Now this whole thing is working on your behalf and you can focus on other things in the kingdom. Your seed will automatically be invested into God's kingdom on a monthly basis. How many new believers can you say that you were responsible for for leading to the Lord last year and giving a free Bible to? How would you like to be responsible for 36 new salvations this year and also give them a free Bible? Well, you can do that with simply $10 a month. So that's there for you. Please consider joining our Easy Feed Monthly Sustainer family. We would be so happy to welcome you in. So friends, all the links are in the description box below. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Feed My Sheep Today. It's also our backup channel, by the way. There you'll be able to keep track of your investment in this great work. Thank you all so much for your much needed support. May God bless you all.